I wanted to maybe end with asking David, and I this may be too obvious of a question that it's too hard to answer. Um, uh How? What is the secret to your success on YouTube? I have or do no you, do idea. Do you even know, no. or it, it just worked? Here's the thing. Here's it just thing. worked. I mean, um, I think it's basically. Are you just so compelling a personality? No, I'm, I'm having fun with you. Go I, I, I think that if if the content is truly terrible there's no way to to rescue it and to grow it. But if right. you meet a certain minimum level of quality content, which I think I, I, I meet, I don't think I'm the most compelling by any means, but what I think the difference maker is, hmm. is consistency and sticking with it, right? I've been doing this more than 10 years. And hmm. now we have almost 1.5 million subscribers. Right. But after our first year, I think we had 7,000 YouTube oh, subscribers. Wow. And a lot of people would give up at that point. because You've been say, doing even YouTube if, for 10 years? With your uh, show? Yes, yes, indeed. Jesus, uh, in fact, 12. Okay. Okay, that's so that's impressive. a lot of people okay. would say, you know, okay, I've got seven thousand right. subscribers. If I just add seven thousand a year, I'm not getting anywhere. But the point is, that's not how things scale. That's not how things right. grow. So right. the biggest bummer for me is a lot of people come to me and they, you know, ask me for advice about what to do. And the first thing I say is, you're not even producing content reliably yet. You need to first figure out I'm doing right. X number of hours or videos per right. week or whatever, and then do it for five years and see where you are. Right. And right. There's just right. a lot of people that aren't that committed to stuff. And so, you know, now that we're at the upper end of the hockey stick and we're hiring more people and, and so on, it's all fun and games, hmm. but you have to be able to tolerate that first part where right. it's slow, slow growth. That's honestly 90, 90% of it in my mind. And you've been so doing a I, podcast I, a day, sorry, Cliff, but is your podcast, do you ever overlap them or is your podcast totally separate from your YouTube? It's jump? the exact same thing. So we do an hour Monday through Friday, and okay. then that gets chopped up and put on YouTube. Oh, okay. God, I thought maybe you were doing a podcast too. I was like, holy shit. No. Okay. Sorry, Cliff. What were you saying? No, I was going to say the thing I've always been, while well, we've got David here, I'll, I'll embarrass him. But uh, you know, what, what I was always very impressed about, and I said this to you, John, when you told me you were booking him, I'm like, hey, I know David. Um, having met him at where certain conferences, trial lawyer stuff, and some other things is, is he adopted uh, early, which I think is a huge thing with YouTube when other people are sort of like, right. hey, what's that? You sort of checked it out, you researched, did what you need to do, and said this is something we can grow with. But you also you professionalized it early, and I would say you know that's the second thing, and the third, what you said, you stuck with it. A lot of people I know this because I do PR, so I'd have progressive clients with books or you know politicians or whoever, I'd want to book them someplace. And I'd call up, you know, half a dozen podcasts. And a lot of them would be like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. We may be doing one next week or in a month. And we may have some guests. David, I call up and, and he'd put me in touch with his booker because he had professionally realized that he couldn't do it on his own with what he was trying to concentrate on. Had somebody doing the booking, scheduled it out, you know, and, and, and had a very consistent, as, as you're saying, you know, I'm doing an hour a day. And, and frankly, if you think about how businesses are successful, that's how they're successful right. is you yeah. create a brand, you create content where people know what they're getting and how much they're getting. They know when they're getting it and you professionalize it in a way that things aren't going to fall through the cracks. So you deserve a lot of credit. I don't think, I think you're, you're modest and that's great. You're a good guy, but you do deserve credit in that. You didn't just like fall for the return of and say, Hey, what do you know? We've got, we've got a million right. subscribers. Like you put in the work, Definitely. you turned it into an actual business model or you professionalize it and you just say, how much money can I grab immediately? You know, and you're Jewish too. So I would have thought you, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I know. Get... A lot of it is systematizing stuff and saying, yeah. okay, yeah. Like we have a bunch of equipment sitting in a, in a room and we've got our team, but let's right. actually organize this into a flow right. and a right. process and, right. and really right. take it seriously. And that's 90% of it. So Cliff, so, I mean, seven, you've seven it more and you years deserve the, it. You know, I was going to say Cliff, seven no, more years it. of the podcast and we're going to make it big. That's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> well, the thing is, all of these things are, it's the typical S curves, you know, and, and if you read yep. about the growth of a lot of businesses, it, it's, there's this acceleration and then there's a leveling. And then what you do during the leveling is what yep. sets you up for but like this period we're in right now, yep. I consider to be, we're, we're kind of consolidating and building infrastructure right. so that when the 2022 election comes, we'll be right. even better positioned to grow more quickly. You know, let me ask you, and I don't, I don't mean to turn this into a whole masterclass, but having said that, I, it's interesting to me, and I think it would be interesting to people. Do, do, if you're going to get into this, and I think this probably applies to 
you know, TikTok, anything else you get into as well, doing video or podcast audio as well, although podcast a little different with the just audio. But do you have to go as professional as you have? You know, you in no. essence have a studio. And I think even for me, that scared me to some degree. I mean, Cliff and I doing our stuff, right? We've occasionally taped, I mean, we tape this, of course, and I'll put it up there. But I find when we put our, our taped stuff up there, it does okay. I mean, our video, unless it's Mary Cheney, by the way, Cliff, Mary Cheney is the one that people really like. And it's the one that YouTube always limits the ads on. On Mary's stuff, interestingly. No, no, you, mean, you mean Mary Trump, don't Mary you? Mary Trump, not Mary Cheney, Mary Trump. Sorry. Like, yeah, we didn't, I haven't talked Cheney, to Mary no. Cheney. Yeah. She wouldn't come on with No, me, I mean, here's my, here's my view on that. I always, th- if, if I have the option of doing something today that I would call a seven out of 10, or spending the next four months and starting in four months at a nine and a half out of 10, I would rather start today at a seven and have four months of data four months from now uh, I would always prefer that. It's uh, the one the one thing I really learned in, in graduate school and business school was the push cart method, which is don't spend a year signing a lease for a huge restaurant before you know whether anybody wants the food. Just put a food cart out there next week and uh, and and start building. So you you really only need, I mean, a Blue Yeti microphone, which is yep. 130 bucks and, you know, $160 Logitech Brio camera. Right. And for $300, you can start putting stuff up on YouTube. And before you know right. it, you might have 500 subscribers and then you build off of that. Right. Yeah. You know, that is interesting because I will say, although I think the internet, honest to God, we really could do a whole broadcast on this at some point, because I think it is really interesting. The blogging in the 2000s, right? Which, you know, I had one of the big liberal blogs. And what was interesting about that was it it changed as I was writing it because I started seeing it wasn't uh, in a it wasn't in a bad way. It wasn't like I said, "Hey, what the hell? The money's here. Let's go that way." It was more seeing what people liked and what they maybe weren't into. And all of a sudden, I started blogging about my orchids because people liked it. And so all of a sudden, it got a little more personal. And it was sort of it's it's the same thing happened when I was at Children's Defense Fund. I'd started doing a lot of online uh, advocacy for them. This was like the mid '90s when things did not exist like that. And you know, started sort of this email list of theirs that again morphed into something different because people started writing us back and saying, you know, uh, Helen did a new childcare uh, bill update. Could you send that out? And I thought, shit, I ought to mention Helen's bill in the next update. And all of a sudden they wanted legislative updates. So I started doing it. But you, you find, and I don't, but I will say, Cliff, I, I don't think we've got enough of a sense from our podcast of that kind of feedback. But sometimes you can get the feedback that shows you, oh, this direction you didn't even think of is the way this tool or this project is now yeah. trending. But yeah, it's that's getting the, that that's feedback. That iter- it's hard. an ongoing, um, it's an ongoing iterative it's process. A and and so a few years ago. Yeah. I said, let's just see what would happen if I did a live stream. And then now live streaming is a totally separate business that does really well for us. But there's Funny. five other things I tried that went nowhere. And so you abandon them when you when you identify that that's the case. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, you're constantly kind of evaluating and judging yeah. that. Which makes it fun if it works. It's just, I think it can be right. frustrating because it's it's not always obvious and you're kind of going, you know, and you've got the problem too of, the people you hear from are self-selecting in a way. So like even doing polls of our listeners or polls of our audience, we're, yep. we were trying to poll people to find out if they wanted shorter or longer podcasts because our podcast right. tends to be, and we'll let you go because I know we promised you an hour. You know, we've done about an hour 15 now. That's our typical podcast length. I asked people and said, would you rather have us do 20 to 30 minutes? Because Cliff was advocating that. Three times a week kind of thing, yeah. And of course, our listeners went, no! But I started telling Cliff, I was like, but is that because our listeners listen to a podcast that's an hour and 15. <laughs> right. Well, there's you know? so one thing about that is um, sometimes it's not that the audience doesn't know what they want, but to give you an example, hmm. v- regularly when we ask people what types of stories they want more coverage of international right. and foreign policy is always at the top. Interesting. And the stories do terribly whenever we do that. Oh. So there's a disconnect <laughs> and it's probably we want our the people, vegetables. The people that are answering are not the majority of the audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, or, or, or they're giving you, like I said, Oh, we think we should all eat vegetables. They're giving right. you yeah. the answer. Right, right. They think they should be giving you. That could be, <laughs> right. that could be. No, that's, oh, interesting. that's hilarious. Yeah. That is hilarious. We think Ecuadorian literature um, <laughs> from the 17th through the, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> all right. Um, 
Oh, the other thing I was going to say about that is even the failures, I think, are super valuable because and I realized this when I was just casually having conversations with people over the last year with small shows that want to grow. And I would hear them say, I'm thinking about doing this thing or that thing, things I had already tried and failed at. And I realized I now have a list of things that that aren't likely to work. Right. And when I tell someone else that, that lets them skip way ahead right. in their development process. And that's right. super valuable too. That's you're great. Very, you're very slow on your show and you're not as slow here. What's that about? Is it Oh, I don't know. I have you, no idea. You, I was telling Cliff, because I, I mean, I've watched your show before, but I pulled up something, I don't know why, this morning. And I would say David Pakman talks a little like this. Whereas wow. John, I would have given five times the number of words in that discussion. And it's something that I've always wondered about. Listen to NPR. I mean, NPR is certainly slower and more reasoned. And it's clearly not the way we talk. Bob Seska That's talks a little more that way, I would argue. It may be that when I'm laying out ideas just by myself, yeah. I'm thinking through them as I do it. Whereas maybe right. because this is more conversational, it has a different cadence. You don't know that's true. That would if be my guess. Alone, if that's it's it. you alone, you're right. Because if you're thinking alone, you might be... You might well, be, you know, John, when you think you you're know? trying to lay out policy or trying to yeah. lay out something like that, you, you're kind of stopping along the way. You want to yeah. make sure you kind of get it right, whereas That's now we're just kind of going but it back made and me, forth. But it also makes me wonder about what works. I've always wondered whether people want, uh, whether it's easier for them to listen to somebody speaking slowly. I tend to not, I can't stand it. I don't mean yours, <laughs> but generally speaking, if I meet and talking with you here, you're not slow at all. But when I meet people who speak slowly... I want to pull my hair out. Sure. You know, I mean, no, we've all been to dinner every parties. Word. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're <laughs> anticipating, well, you're anticipating every word they're going to say and you're like, oh my God. Um, but, but it's made me wonder whether for doing online media, if slow is good and welcome because that for whatever reason works better for people. For older people, know. it does. I know my mom, yeah. you know, my mom goes, no, she's like, slow down. Stop it. Tell me again what you just said. You know, like you do get to that age where, we're all, at least for that demographic, you can't talk like me. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a given. Yeah. But uh, mom would love you. She's like, that David kid, I understand him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David, we will let you go. This that's has been great. Thank you. Needed. Thanks so much exactly. for having me. Hey, seriously. Yep. Always great seeing you, man. Thanks, Thanks for being nice. Okay, good luck. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.